into like a Hollywood film to kind of see what the story of Noah's about anyways, it, it was just a, just kind of a view. But Pastor Sai preached on um, Noah last night. And you know, I had my own views, but it kind of opened my eyes. Um, you know, we all know the story of Noah. You know, how it worked was mankind was, was living in sin, living in filth. And God came and had to swipe it out there. But what we don't realize is, um, God didn't come to to bring an end to mankind. He came to bring restoration, yeah. restoration to mankind. Eh? And when you think about it, you know, it, it does apply to our lives. The whole kind of symbolism of, you know, the whole Noah concept. Yeah. What happened was everyone was living in sin. Everyone was living in um, in darkness, and God had to come and He had to just wash it all away. Mm. You know, how many of us need to actually just drown our sins in? Eh? Yeah. Drown our sins in His presence. Yeah. Like if we can imagine that, you know, that where that ark, our ark is, you know, our relationship with God, but everything else around it is kind of stopping, is kind of stopping us from really, you know, reaching to God. Eh? So a massive encouragement for everyone is just, you know, find out how to drown your sins, drown your sins, because if you drown it in uh, God's presence, then it'll, it'll be gone. Yeah. Yeah. Restoration. God will bring restoration. Yeah. He won't bring it into your life, he'll bring restoration to your life. Yeah. So that's the whole purpose that I saw in Noah. You know, we all need to find um, a way of not living with our sin, but finding a way of drowning it. Yeah. And you know, Noah had to wait five months above the water to for, for actual yeah. answers. So you know, the same applies to us. It's not in our time, it's in God's time. Eh? Yeah. So when God decides to bring a switch, we have to be ready. Because if we're not, do we miss out? Yeah, it's good, so, yeah, that's all. How are we doing tonight, guys? Okay, so before I start, you know, um, I just want to share with you guys like a quick uh, testimony about my life. So, so, um, yeah, so sort of speaking about my life, I, I, um, I performed that like three years ago, back in 2011. And I just want to share with you guys a bit of my life, you know, what I've been through before I found Christ. You know, the soul ties that was attached to me before I found Christ. So. Yeah. It's a special thing in Fiji. There's two pets here now. There's two pets. This is about Mama. So special. Has been a life-changing experience by the grace of God, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to share briefly about how I'm growing up as a young child to make God for something and change my life. Good evening and greetings to you all. My name is Trevor and I have the privilege to share my testimony with you all. Growing up as a young child, I was influenced and affected by a complicated relationship that my mother had with my biological father. To cut a long story short, the environment at the time was very scary. Feelings, especially as a young child. Before the young, screaming and so on. My mum did the best she could in raising me when I was involving an ongoing battle and called for custody for me. Basically, the environment I was in impacted my life. At the age of six, my parents separated and life from them was complicated. I was put in a position where I had to look after my younger brother and support my mother through the hard times we went through. As a relief, I would hang out with the wrong crowd, get into bad situations like 
and the typical young civil penalty, such as breaking into houses, cars, and tanking, which led them to getting picked up from the police station. I guess it was cool at the time. My turning point in my life was when I became a Christian at the age of 12. The feeling at this time was peace, peaceful and knowing that I was at the right place at the right time. From this day on, my life changed for the better. I enjoyed going to youth groups and hanging out with church friends and family. My mother was blessed with a loving husband and father figure to my siblings and I. Things have turned right around for me. Why? Because I know who I am and the Lord, and He has a plan for me. From all those years of difficulty, He has held my broken heart. Today I was serving in the church. I had the opportunity to go to missions to Cambodia. I'm surrounded by loving people. I have a supportive family, and I can't wait for what God has planned for me in the future. Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, the plans of the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a bright future. This verse motivates me when I wake up in the morning, knowing that the Lord has a bright future with a purpose for me. If God can use someone like me from the things I've done in this life, from the things I've went through to go out to the ends of the earth, and spread God's unconditional love to the broken. I want to change the world. I want to make a mark. I want to be the life. Don't despise what God can do with you, changing your life so you can change the people around you, change the world around you. And finishing, I would like to share a poem I have written a while ago. It's called The Little Boy That Shined. I once heard about a boy that fell to the ground, screaming with furious tears, one was his hair now. With anxious pain, tears pouring in, no one came around. With raging fire, he was about to let it out. He was just an innocent boy, pushed to the side, rejected in his heart by smile and his pride. He was well denied, but the Lord saw his prize. With this pain in his heart, he tried to hide. A hand reached out from the sky. A loud voice said, Son, I've collected every tear from your eyes. Nowhere to go, no one else to turn to. He places the pain and burdens upon that cross. Jesus said to that boy, Son, I'm with you, and no one will lost. So he placed his tears and broken heart upon that cross. No one knows the price of that cross. The Lord said to me, It's your time to shine, it's your time to loss. a long night. You know, God's really placed us on my heart about soul ties, you know. Soul ties on our life that, you know, um, that sort of crumble us, you know, crumble us from moving forward in life. You know, and, um, you know, I believe that this message will benefit you guys, you know, will um, cut ties and, you know, to help you guys to keep going forward, you know, in life, you know, without barriers and all that kind of stuff, you know. So that was just a little snip about my life, you know, the journey that I've been through and before I found Christ. You know, what I believe was my soul ties from my past that carried on from my parents to my parent, from my parents, great parents, and great great parents, and so on. You know, it was like a 10 generation soul ties. You know, it was soul ties of depression, uh, divorce, and, you know, and, and drinking alcohol and lust and all that. And I believe that it was sort of attached to me. So if you guys sort of got, if you guys got your Bible, I just want to share with you guys um, scripture. <coughs> Do you guys need pens? Anyone need pens? <laughs> so I'm reading from uh, Isaiah 1 verse 18. Come now, uh, Isaiah 1 verse 18. 
Come now, let us seal the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. You know, I believe like, you know, in, in, in the Christian faith, you know, what, what definition is of soul, soul ties is like a soul tie is an attachment of our personality, you know, to a personal object. Yeah. You know, it's like the pain that we carry that we are attracted to. You know, so that's the definition of a Christian view of a soul tie. A soul tie is an emotional bond or connection that unites you with someone else. You can become a, a bound to a person through your soul. Have you found yourself tormented by thoughts about a person? Wondering about them, checking, checking on them, rehearsing times with them. If so, you have soul ties. Have you grieved over a severe relationship over the past, you know, your broken relationship, or someone you were once close to? That again is a soul tie. Soul ties are formed through close friendships, through vows and commitments and promises, and through physical intimacy. Not all soul ties are bad. God wants us to have a healthy relationship that builds us up, provides wisdom, and gives godly counsel. God will strategically bring good relationships into our lives to form healthy soul ties. When David had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own life. And I just want to read for you guys 1 Samuel, uh, Samuel 18 verse 1. In contrast, Satan always brings counterfeits into our lives from unhealthy soul ties. You know, um, I, I got a few demonstrations of soul ties, but I don't think to show up. What was the reading? Uh, First Samuel 18, verse 1. You know, um, I'll share with you guys some, some few uh, soul ties that will relate to what you guys may be going through in life, you know. And these soul ties are abusive relationships. Physically, sexually, emotionally, or verbally. Abusive relationship. Adulterous affairs. Sex before marriage. Obsessive entang entanglement with a person. Giving them more authority in your life than, than God, you know? So you're sort of letting someone else control your life than God sort of being the center of your life. So that's obsessive. And controlling relationships. You know, I just want to share with you guys something. Um, so I've prepared like a little demonstration thing, okay? So, let's say this is a soul tie, right? There's depression. There's lust. There's discouragement. There's disappointment. There's drugs and alcohol. There's pornography, right? And what else is there? There's broken relationships. Abusive relationships and adultery affairs. Um, you know, when people in your past may have called you ugly or never felt wanted, or you know, in your reflection, in your mirror, you look at yourself and you're like, I'm ugly. You know, it's because that soul tie right there, someone has called you ugly in the past. Could be your parents or whatever, you know, and it's stuck with you. That's most abusive soul tie right there. And then we got other soul ties. What's another one? What, what's another one there? Um, is anger, right? Anger. Um, there's divorce. Huh? There's fear. Fear, right? What's another one that you guys mean? Dishonesty? Dishonesty. Insecurity. Insecurity? Shame. Shame. And then there's you. That's you right there. Look at all that 10 generation or more of soul ties that's attached to you. You know, and as we walk every day with life, you know, that's all of us right there. You know, there's discouragement, there's abusive relationship, there's lust, pornography, dishonesty, anger, you know, and everything else that's attached to us right now. Right now. That's us. And we can't keep we can't move forward. We can't move forward unless Jesus is right there, right? Dishonesty gone. Okay? Dishonesty gone. We need Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we cut lust, pornography, gone. 
the name of Jesus, we cut anger. Gone. In the name of Jesus, we cut disappointment. Gone. In the name of Jesus, we cut drugs and alcohol. Gone. In the name of Jesus, we cut fear into our lives. Fear of the future, fear of men. But Lord Jesus, we fear you. We cut you right now. In the name of Jesus, fear. We've got no, no control over our lives. What's another one? What's another one? What are you struggling with? Shame? We cut shame and insecurity about our life, you know? That we may be caught ugly and all that kind of stuff in the past and it's stuck with us. You know? We cut right now. Shame. Gone. What's another one? What's another one? Um, Self-doubt. 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 We cut you in the name of Jesus. Abusive relationship. Abusive relationship. Verbally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Abusive relationship. Over our lives, two generations, our parents, parents, parents. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. cut you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Gone. Nice. Abusive relationship. Yeah. You know? Insecurities. And in our in, in our mirror reflection. Being caught ugly. Mm -hmm. Worthless. Good for nothing. Mm -hmm. You'll never be anyone or anything in life. We cut you in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Gone. What's another one? What's another one? Hurt. Hurt. Mm -hmm. we, we cut hurt and vibes, you know that anyone who's ever hurt us in the past mm -hmm. and will hurt, hurt us yeah. from days to come right now we cut you in the name of Jesus that you know you won't you won't hurt us no longer yeah. what's another one? insecurity insecurity? we cut insecurity you know we are secure in the name of Jesus yeah. we are secure mm -hmm. we're confident there's another one we cut confident we cut um negative. you know yeah negative words over us we claim confidence in our life. Yes. Mm. We claim confidence in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Gone. We we cut hopelessness. Yeah. Everyone who ever has called us hopeless. You know, that we'll never be anything, you know. We cut you in the name of Jesus. Hopeless that we will bring hope. Yeah. We will bring hope in the name of Jesus. What's another one? One last one. One sure. Sure. No, pornography and lust on guys. Yeah. We cut you in the name of Jesus. That we'll no longer look at the girls' lusts for yeah. feelings, pornography. Yeah. Cut you in the name of Jesus. There you are. You don't need soul ties. You don't need soul ties. You need to be set free. We're, yeah. we're going to be set free tonight. Yes. That's discouragement, everything, dishonesty, fear, <laughs> lust, pornography, right there. Jesus died on us, you know. Uh, he, he died on the cross. He set us free from all that kind of stuff. We don't need soul ties from 10 generations before us. Yeah. It needs to be cut tonight, and we will cut it tonight. So. You know, we need Jesus. Yeah. We need yeah. Jesus. It's and, really um,. Cool. You know, without Jesus, right? Without the name of Jesus, without power in the name of Jesus, you know, we will be walking around with soul ties. But it needs to be cut in the name of Jesus. Yeah. It needs to be cut. You know, there's no other name. We can't use Trevor, you know, to, to cut it. Yeah. It's got to be cut in the name of Jesus, yeah. you know, to set us free. So that was one demonstration that I just want to share with you guys. It's good, bro. And if you guys can turn to Proverbs 4, verse 20, 22. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to a man's whole body. You know, right there, that's a that's a strong scripture. <coughs> and it's a strong scripture. Yeah. You know, you, uh, Proverbs 4, verse 20 to 22. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to a man's whole body. Yeah. You know, we all have demons and all that kind of stuff that we've fought in the past, or maybe still fighting till this very day. You know, most of us have had a rough childhood growing up, or know someone that's had a rough childhood, or been through a broken relationship, or abusive relationship, you know, that they just got out of it, right? And we know someone. You know, um, life doesn't fit. Life will never be fair. Life isn't, it will never be fair. It never is and it never will be. You know, that's, that's life. That's the life that we live in. That's the life that we're born into. You know, a cold, sinful world. You know, but my encouragement to you guys, you just got to pick yourself up and just keep going forward. You know, keep going forward. Don't let nothing hold you back. No strongholds, no burdens, you know, and no soul ties. You know, but, you know, we are all natural born sinners. Born sinners into this sinful world. You know, sin became attached to us. Little did we know strongholds were attached to us from generations before us. 
10 generations before us. You know, it's a cycle that repeats itself, but you will be set free tonight. You know, in the name of Jesus, we will be set free. Despite our sin, you know, Jesus still died for us. He still shed his blood. You know, his crucifixion, you know, that's, that's how much he, he loved us, you know, that, you know, all our strongholds, you know, soul ties, disappointment, anger, everything, you know, we sort of, we spit at Jesus' face nearly every day when we, when we have soul ties on us. You know, we run back to them. We run back to the soul ties. We go back to the old habits, you know? Um, my encouragement, man, is like, what don't kill us will make us stronger. You know, Psalms 147, verse 3. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He heals the broken heart and he binds up their wounds. You know, he, he's close to us when no one else is close to us, you know. Yeah. He's, you know, it's like his real intimate love for us, his chemistry for us, you know, he holds us real close to, um, to his heart when we're in our most vulnerable spot. You know, it's funny because... The enemy, he loves to hit us when we're in our most vulnerable, low spot. He hits us when we got our guard down. You know, we got our guard down. That's when he comes to, comes, comes to at us, you know. And he sort of repeats your uh, broken, brokenness, you know, from before, your old soul ties. Yeah. You know, they committed years ago, whatever. He loves to repeat it. But we're, we're going to renew your, your mindset tonight. You know, that old um, cassette that plays in your mind, replays in your mind, we're going to stop it, we're going to pause it, we're going to break it. A snap it tonight. Yeah. Oh. You know? The soul ties from generations that have been gone before you, that could be still attached to you that you don't know of. Soul ties from generations before you. You know, you possibly might be 10 generations before you from soul ties. You know, there's anger, lust, pornography. From your parents, 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 the 10 generations before you, that soul ties are attached to you right now. Um, so you sit here at times thinking, you know, why are you still doing the same things over and over again? Like it becomes a natural habit. It's like it becomes a natural instinct when you're in your darkest or lowest, most uh, vulnerable spot in life. You know, it's a mistake and habits that are still connected to you like a bullet cord. You know, it becomes a natural reaction and we sort of brush it off at times and do the same mistakes. We sort of run back to it. You know, we brush it off and we're like, you know, it's all right, you know, God still forgives me. You know, yes. we, we run back to the soul ties. Yeah. You know, the broken relationship, whatever, you know, we run back to it. So I just want to share with you guys um, a, one demonstration with you guys. If I can get Ralph's, Footy, and Josh. Josh. And Ants. Ants. I'm going to show you guys one more. Um, <laughs> so, what's that? I'm going to do Yep. And uh, can I get you here? Oh, go taste this one. And, and, yeah. Okay, so, this is one demonstration that what soul ties is, okay? This is soul ties from 10 generations ago of anger. Soul ten, um, generations of lust and pornography. Soul ties of disappointment and insecurities. And there's Josh. So if, if you guys can hold on to him, hold on to him. So as Josh keeps moving forward, as he, as he keeps moving forward in life, you know, soul ties are attracted to him, you know. A soul ties are still holding on to him. You know, as he tries to succeed in life, you know, we got anger holding him back, you know, saying that, you know, you'll never be anything. We got lust and pornography saying, you know, run back to run back to the um run run back to lust and pornography, you know? Yeah. And then we got disappointment and insecurities saying, you know. You know, you're, you're ugly, you know, whenever you look in the mirror, you're ugly. You know, everyone thinks that you're ugly, there, there's, and there's Josh, you know, you can't be set free. In the name of Jesus, we cut anger. In the name of Jesus, we cut lust and uh, pornography. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, we cut disappointment, yes. and Josh will be set free. Yeah. 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 You know, soul ties stop us from going, going forward in life. Yeah. You know, it's like change the shackles that are attached to us, you know. Yeah. Each time we keep going forward, you know, yeah. it pulls us back, yeah. it pulls us back. You know, it pulls us back to the square one. Mm. You know, and it seems like um, we can't reach our destiny. We can't, you know, we can't move forward because soul ties from 10 generations are still holding us back. You know, so I just want to share with you guys one more. Um, <clears throat> You know, here are some soul ties that you may be relating to. You know, I was going to put it on board, but um, I can't. 
time. So um, I've printed out some some sort of full ties uh, prayer deliverance thing that we will. Sorry, I, I don't I don't think there's there's enough for everyone. So. Okay. So. Hopefully some of some some of you can put it so we all um also there is um oh there is an option do you want to be on one you guys can keep it in so um it's yours okay so i just want to show you guys um so we've got soul ties, right? On the first page on the top. You know, we got soul ties. We got soul ties that are broken, broken physically, emotionally, and spiritually. You know, we got rejection, neglection, are we all um yeah. unwantedness, unloved, loneliness, depression, dis discouragement, insecurities, bullying, being caught ugly, being caught a mistake from birth. They've felt love, you know, soul ties. You know, girls never feeling beautiful, you know, girls never being told that they're beautiful because you know, they, they sort of, they compare themselves to other girls, you know, and their self-worth and beauty found in Christ, you know, ashamed of themselves in the mirror. You know, sometimes guys or girls, you know, we're, we're insecure about our height, weight, and all that kind of stuff, and abandoned, feeling stranded, unworthy, broken relationships. Family, friends, spouses, couples, or exes, and those are soul ties on us. You know, um, there might be some of us that maybe have been raped or um, child molested when we were young. As soul ties. You know, addicted to sex, lust, pornography, cycles of poverty, suicides, causing harm to yourselves, breakups, divorce, cancer, diabetes, and habits and failure. Called useless, God for nothing, never be anything or anyone in life. Worthless temptations, addictions, drugs and alcohol, family violence and family divisions. Called a mistake. Those are all soul ties that I'm sure that there is someone out here right now that could relate to anything that's on there or something that I don't know, um, I don't know of yet. You know, but these are all lies. These ain't new. You know, these are not you. Yeah. You know, these are the lies of the enemy. You know, this is not you. This is, these soul ties are not you. You know, you're not neglected. You're not rejected. You know, you are loved because yeah. Jesus loved you, you know. You know, uh, John 3 verse 16, you know, we all know that one. You know, so we're not unloved, you know. We are, you know, when, when people call us ugly, you know, we are... One, one dollar, well, million dollars, you know? Mm -hmm. A million dollars were priceless. No one's ugly here. That's good. Okay, so, so do not believe none of these lies. You know, you're not chained up or shackles in the enemy's camp. We are going to declare that and take everything back from the enemy's camp tonight. Yeah. Yeah. That he has stolen from us. Nice. You, know, you will be set free in the name of Jesus. You know, you will be set free tonight from all these soul ties that you see right there on that paper. You know, what you confess with your mouth, you will become, right? Yeah. So at times, you know, if, if we're called failure, like if we call ourselves failures, then, well, you will become a failure. Mm -hmm. If you call yourself success, you will become successful. Yeah. It's funny because um, when I was young, um, one, someone that was just really close to me, you know, that's all I heard when I was young. You'll, you'll never be anyone. You're nothing. You're good for nothing. You're hopeless. You're ugly and all that. And that stuck in my head over and over again. It played like a, a tape over and over again. When I make a mistake, like, oh, Trev, you know, you're useless. Trev, you're useless. When I, you know, when I make heaps of mistakes or, you know, I felt like I was a failure. And, and uh, it took so many cries and all that to set me free, you know, from all those um, chains that was on me, the shackles. You know, if you say that you are beautiful, well, then man, you are a million dollars. You know, you guys are a million dollars now. Uh, if you guys say that you're ugly, well, <laughs> you guys are... Uh, <laughs> so, you know, when you declare that you're set free from your past, you know, your soul ties, you will be set free. Yeah. You know, we declare it, we claim it, we call it. You know, who does this at times? You know, when you make a mistake, you call yourself hopeless, you know. You call yourself, like, man, you got, you compare yourself to someone else. Why? Because you are caught from someone that replays in your mind over and over again. 
But let's break these cassettes tonight and chuck on a new vision, renewing your mind and change your mind. Nice. You know, um, why why at times we're out to fail when we're called to be su successful yeah. and succeed in life, you know? We are called to be the light. Yeah. Matthew 5 verse 13. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So in closing, you know, um, so, so, uh, where's my... Oh. <laughs> So, in closing, you know, these are some soul ties that we're going to be cutting tonight. In the name of Jesus, you know. We're going to be cutting broken, you know, brokenness physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Rejection, neglection, unwantedness, unlove, loneliness, depression, discouragement, insecurities, bullying, being caught ugly, being caught a mistake from birth, never felt love. Girls never felt that they were beautiful, their self, worth, and beauty found in Christ. Ashamed of themselves in the mirror. Your weight, your height, and abandoned, stranded. Unworthy brokenness, broken relationships from family, friends, spouses, or your exes, ex-couples, and all that. Rape, child molested, addicted to sex, lust, pornography, cycles of poverty, suicides, causing harm to yourselves, breakups and divorce, cancer, and so on. It's going to be cut tonight. Yeah. We're going to cut it tonight. And, and I just want you guys, um, okay, I'm um, holding you this. So, I've, have we got pens, or do you guys need pens? So, what, what you guys see here, right? Um, is there another question? Um, okay, so, so right now we're gonna. Um, so this is really confidential. It's between you and God, and and what you see there, you may be relating to any of these words here. There's soul ties, right? And we're gonna be we're gonna be writing them down, and we're gonna be naming these soul ties. And we're gonna place it here. We're gonna chuck it in, chuck it in here. You know, because it's confidential and it's between you and God. Whatever it is, last pornography, whatever. We're going to put it here and we're going to cut these soul ties tonight. Mm. So, so, do you guys need a pen? Who needs? Go. Oh. <laughs> 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 to bring it today and it's so weird that it happened early in the morning but there's really so much to our um, what our church been saying today um and does everyone uh, like uh, took it to Loma, uh to about her like on the way here um has any, does everyone remember the story about the samaritan yeah um so you know we're all familiar as you know like with everything about it um so the person that was hurt um you know god said to hit the god bomb was that's your soul tie that's you to your soul tie you know, you, that's your bond, you're hurt, and you're in a ditch because of what's connected you and what's like everything about you, and you're defeating yourself. So you're there in the ditch. Pastor Paul can't save you. Yeah. You know, Benny Hinn can't save you. Yeah. Your parents can't save you. You yourself can't save you. So that's why you're in that ditch. And that's why they're walking past you because they can't save you. Yeah. You know, and the Samaritan is Jesus. It's Jesus that, that can save you. You know, he doesn't just put you on the donkey, he takes you on this cloud, he puts you under the wing that you saw on the like um you know under the wings of the eagles. And the price that he pays to the keeper, that's the price he paid on the cross. You know, and the keeper is God, that's God himself, you know, leading you back into the kingdom. But it's through the story that, you know, the God born says is, you know, this is true, this is real. You know, if you want to be in the ditch, you know, if you reckon that you, you don't you don't need to be cut from these soul ties then you know think about the ditch 
and being in there by yourself and all alone. You know, you're looking to people off the squad, you know, as it says, you know, in Matthews, that, you know, through man, everything is impossible, but through God, you know, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. So that's what I believe that Samaritan thing, and that's our goal for. Mm -hmm. Should just to really think about it when you write it down on the papers. So this moment is between you guys and God. You know, um, if you guys want me to pray over you guys, when you guys, um, when you guys finish, I will be cutting soul ties on you. You know, so when you guys finish, we'll, we'll get into prayer and all that kind of stuff. Yeah.
that I, I gave you guys, you know, it's between you guys and God. When you guys go home tonight, write down this, this uh, soul tie that's bothering you guys, you know, um, call it by name, you know, write it down. And then uh, there's a prayer. So if you guys can read it, like when you guys go home, then there's a deliverance prayer that um, we'll see you guys through from it, you know. So, yeah, took time to print it out for you guys. Waste it on my ink. So, um, are we, are we all ready? Um, will I be able to turn off the lights? Lord Jesus, we come before you, Lord. Yes. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, for us. The soul tired, Lord Jesus, of this disappointment to be gone in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, for insecurity to be gone in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, for abusive relationship to be gone in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord Jesus, for um, you know, abusive relationship from the past, from the exes, Lord Jesus, couples, Lord Jesus, from family, Lord, and spouses to be gone in the name of Jesus. These soul ties, Lord, that will be cut. Tonight, Lord Jesus, they will be cut, Lord Jesus. We claim it, we call it, we declare it, Lord Jesus, that they will be cut tonight, Lord. You know, um, ten generations before us, Lord Jesus, that these soul ties have attached to us, Lord Jesus, that there is no room, there is no room anymore, you know, that we will be set free, that we'll be keep moving forward, Lord, knowing that there will be no soul ties, you know, nothing bothering us, Lord Jesus, nothing hindering us, Lord. We will cut it tonight, Lord. We declare it, Lord. I call it lust pornography. I pray right now that you cut these soul ties of lust and pornography, Lord. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, for rejection, Lord. Abandoned, Lord Jesus. Stranded, Lord Jesus. Feeling unloved, Lord Jesus. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, for that you cut these soul ties of lust and pornography, Lord. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, for that you cut these soul ties of lust and pornography, Lord. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, for that you cut these soul ties of lust and pornography, Lord. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, for that you cut these soul ties of lust and pornography, Lord. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, for that you cut these soul ties of lust and I pray right now, Lord Jesus, to be cut in the name of Jesus. I pray right now for broken trust, Lord. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you restore our trust, Lord Jesus. That you restore our trust, Lord. You know, in Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, Lord, you said in your word, Lord, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understandings and your own acknowledge Him and He will direct your path, Lord. So I pray right now, Lord Jesus, as we cut these soul ties, we will cut them in the name of Jesus. We will cut them, Lord. So, um... If I can get some of you, like if you guys want me to or not, um, I'll pray on you guys, you know, on <coughs> whatever soul ties that may be holding you guys back. You know, it's, it's up to you, it's honestly up to you. So if you guys don't want to, then it's, it's cool. But yeah, this, this is what soul ties that, um, that have attached to us, you know, for generations before us. And that before we were born, they were already creeping up on us. Yeah. You know, they were already creeping up on us. And, and it's, it's, you know, for you guys to identify what soul ties are holding you back from moving forward in life, you know, moving forward with Christ, you know, the barriers and obstacles that you guys are facing right now, you know, we've got to identify them tonight. Yeah. And we're going to cut them. We're going to cut them. Thank you, Jesus. You're amazing, Lord. Stand in our own. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. not in this presence leave us. I'm not sure if we should all just put our hands out and pray over this, like just stretch our arms out and just pray all of and over all the time and just pray for yeah. I'm open to anything. Yeah. What do you guys want to do? I think we should all declare it. Strongholds, Lord Jesus. All these burdens upon our lives, Lord Jesus. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you break it in the name of Jesus. Lord. I pray right now that you rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Lord. I pray right now that you break it and smash it in the name of Jesus. That these demons and soul ties got nothing on us, Lord. I pray right now that you will set us free tonight, Lord. Of disappointment, Lord, and insecurities, Lord. Abandoned and stranded, Lord. Abuse of relationships, Lord Jesus. Lust and pornography, I pray right now that you break it in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that you break it in the name of Jesus, Lord. Right now, you Let's break these chains, Lord Jesus. Set us free, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Woo! Yeah. What a warrior! See, Job was a guy that um, the enemy came and just took yeah. everything from him. No matter what had it, what happened, that the enemy threw at him, the enemy took away his family, the enemy uh, took everything he owned, he owned his riches, stripped them right down. And, and right there, bro, that's a good excuse for soul ties. Because the enemy's always going to take away everything.